Hello photography friends and welcome to this creative Photoshop tutorial where you're going to learn how to make this super cool illusion the Drost effect. I looked into this technique and where it originated from and it's actually named after a Dutch cocoa brand. So on their box back in the 19, early 1900s, they had a picture of a nurse holding this cocoa. And then they had taken the picture of the nurse holding the cocoa and put it onto the cocoa box. So it created this recursive picture where it just repeats and repeats and repeats. Anyway, that's a little bit of history of the technique, but let's talk about how to create it because it is so fun. So this image started off looking like this. So it's just me holding a frame with nothing inside it, so no backing or glass. And I was very careful to hold my hands at the edges so that my fingers weren't crossing over the middle of the frame because that will make your life a little bit more difficult. Not impossible, but difficult. And there are a couple of things that I found worked well and didn't work well for this. So it's best when the frame can be as straight as possible. Now, I had some struggles with this. I wasn't really caring about it at the time that I was shooting it. But if you can make it as straight and flat as possible to your camera, that will be perfect. Make sure you leave some space at the top here. I was going to crop this section out anyway, but I'll talk about the dress a little in a second. I wish I hadn't put my watch on. In fact, I took it off in later shots, but not for this one. So I actually had to Photoshop that out in the final image, as you'll see. And just in terms of the dress, so... Looking at this image here, you can see my shape is kind of a little bit wonky, but I also made a different version here where the dress was perfectly straight. And I love that that created like a, a straight line. So it looks like a really steep triangle, whereas this one here was more kind of shapely. So that's just something to be aware of. You don't really need to worry about this stuff. It just if you're really into the optics, that might be something you do want to care about. So now to actually shoot this, basically what I did is I had a light, a speed light in a softbox positioned directly above me, facing down at my face, so that everything was lit fairly evenly, but from above. And I probably had a remote tucked in this hand here. So how do we edit the Drossy effect? Well, that is the fun part. So let's begin. I will show you what I'll do is I will grab this photo here. I'll bring it over into Photoshop. So photo, edit in, edit in Adobe Photoshop. And this is a great simple masking technique if you're pretty new to Photoshop. So what we need to do is make a selection of the inside of the frame. Now there's lots of ways to do this and I'm going to go for Photoshop's most complicated tool to use. It is my favorite, however. So it's called the pen tool and you access it by the shortcut P or it's this little calligraphy nib here. And what you would do, we, we're going to use it very simply, so not too complicated, is make a point in one corner, make a point in the next one, and the next one, and the next one. This is presuming that your frame is a square or rectangle that has straight edges. Then I can right click inside it and say make selection. You'll get some options here. I will just do exactly as it says best thing to remember is you have to use zero here. Then we have our selection. Then I just add a layer mask. So it's this little rectangle here with a hole in the middle and it's kept everything except what we want. So now I will make sure that layer mask is highlighted and press control or command I and now we have exactly what we want. Now it's this, at this stage that if you want to crop the image you want to crop it now because otherwise you are going to have too much going on. So let me just show you that. I'm going to press control or command J to duplicate that layer. So we've now got two copies and I'm going to press Control or Command T, which is my transform tool. I'll go over this again later on, but just so you know. And then I will drag in the edges so that it fits. Now you'll see there's an issue here and this is why you want to keep extra space in your image so that you can crop them out in post to get the right aspect ratio. So it's really important to have some extra space around your setup so you can avoid issues like this. I could, of course, put extra black in at the sides, but then the effect doesn't work quite as well. So something to be aware of. So we'll cancel out of that and we will crop it first. So I'll delete that copy we made. We're back on our original. I'm going to crop it with the C as my shortcut for the crop tool. And I want to do it, I think, at 8 by 10. 
which is roughly the same dimensions at a guess. We'll move that up to the top of the image and I'm even going to pull in this bottom handle just to get rid of as much dead space as possible. Then I'm going to pull in this top one just to make everything kind of centered. That looks pretty good and then I'll hit my tick when I am happy. So now we'll make a copy with Control or Command J. So we've got that duplicate. To resize it, we'll press Control or Command T to access our transform tool and we can start to drag this in so it fits. Now one thing I'm going to do is press my tick and drag this layer underneath. So you always want your copies underneath. So then we'll go back to that transform tool with Control or Command T and you want to pull in the edges until you see the clear background. And you want to try and get as much of the image as possible. And I'll move that over. That looks pretty good. And then we just repeat that process a bunch of times. So with the little one highlighted, we'll press Control or Command J. You'll highlight the bottom layer. We'll press Control or Command T. We will drag that in. Same process over and over, making sure we don't lose anything. There looks good. Hit our tick. And you would just do this process over and over and over again until it's so small that you can no longer see it and then you just don't have to keep going for infinity. So as you go, it will get smaller and smaller. So you'll need to start zooming in. So you can zoom in using Z and then clicking on your image or the shortcut is to press, if you're in any other tool, you can press Control plus or Command plus and that will zoom you in. And you just keep going until it's so, if you're so zoomed in and it's so tiny that you just can't see it when you're zoomed out anymore. So let's look at the one that I worked on earlier. And so it ended up having somewhere between 11 and 13 layers. And if we were to really zoom in, I'll just show you how far it went. You'll see that, that I eventually reached a point where I put nothing in it. All I did is put some black in. So to do that, I went to the adjustment layer icon, which is the little half pie. I selected solid color. I chose black, so black is your bottom right. I hit OK, and then I made sure that layer was right at the bottom of my layer stack. So I dragged it right to the bottom. And so that's how we do the drost effect. Very tricky to the eye. Now, I just want to show you one other thing I did with the drost effect is created this image here. So exact same effect, but this time I changed my pose. So let's talk about how this was shot. So. Basically, I held the frame, but this time not over my face, I held it over my torso. Again, I was careful that my hands were not crossing over the edges, and I made sure that I had heaps of extra space in case I needed to crop anything out. So that is really important. The lighting was the same. Then I did a bunch of different poses. So there's this one, for example, and something like this. So if you look at the final, they're the different poses I used. And I just did the same thing. I made a selection of her frame. Then I made the next image smaller, but this time I had to cut each frame out individually. So that is the difference. So I had to select the inside of the frame five times. Then I put the next one in. And this time I wasn't making sure that the whole frame was in. It was more important to have the subject. And I did a little bit of storytelling. So as if she's looking down at this person making the funny face, and this one is looking up, laughing, and then this one here is just looking a bit smarmy. So on each one, I made the selection, reduced the size, and instead of just using my control or command T to resize, I also rotated. So I rotated them into place. And you do that by holding your cursor outside and just spinning it around. So pretty cool, right? You may not have noticed, but this project, while fun to create, was also cleverly designed to introduce you to using layers and masks in Photoshop. My whole teaching ethos is not to sit you down in a classroom and bore you with facts, but rather to give you fun projects so you learn on the go. Can you see why learning photography and Photoshop the fun way is so much better than reading boring textbooks? If this style of learning works better for you, come check out my course, Photo Fanatics or simply subscribe to my channel where I'll be back next week with another creative tutorial. Happy creating!